Amen. Amen. Again tonight, we give God glory for another Tuesday night of teaching. And this is now the month of April. And today we celebrate this day in the Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight I want you to understand after all of the studies that we've gone through, we've now come to the point in life to ask the question, why do we suffer? Let me say that again. We come to the question tonight to ask, why do the saints suffer? And I need you to understand that there is a word tonight for us from the word of the living God to bring us into a place now where we understand and grow and move forward in maturity. First of all, I want you to know that we're going to the book of St. Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to start at verse number four. I want you to hear now what is going on in the world yes. and what is to come. And I need you to understand that through all of this, there's going to be trials and tribulations. Yes. And so here we see in Matthew 24 and verse four, the Bible begins by telling us something that Jesus said. It said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Listen to me tonight. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Mm -hmm. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes in diver places. All of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Verse 8, let me read that again. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I need you to hear me tonight. Verse number 10. And then shall many be offended and shall be betrayed one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Verse number 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And so tonight I want to ask the question, why do the saints suffer? And the word of the Lord comes to us tonight, first of all, from the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. And it says this, after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty forever and Ever. Amen. And I'm compelled by the Spirit of God to read that again because I need you to understand that here in 2022, many of the saints are suffering and many of the people of God are distressed because of the things that they're going through. Yes. But I need you to know that you need to know the Word of God for yourself. And so again, let me give you First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, in the Amplified. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty, forever and ever. 
Amen. And so the first scripture tells us now that after you have suffered a while, then the Lord is going to do something for you. Right. He's going to strengthen yes. you. He's going to establish you and he's going to make you what you ought to be. Then we look at Psalms 34. Psalms 34, chapter uh, 34, verses 17 through 20. Listen to me very, very carefully. The Bible says in verse 17, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescue them from all their distress and troubles. The Lord is near to the heartbroken and he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sins. Then verse 19 says, many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescue him from them all. And I need you to understand today that there is an explanation in the word of God for you and for me as to why we suffer. And I need you to understand today that this word comes both in the Old and the New Testament. Here we find in the word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 12 in the Amplified, it says, we work for our living, work hard with our own hands. When we are reviled and verbally abused, we bless. When we are persecuted, we take it patiently and endure. Let me read that again for your sake. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12, Amplified. And I need you to hear me tonight. We work for our living, work hard with our own hands. When we are reviled and verbally abused, we bless. When we are persecuted, we take it patiently and endure. Hear me tonight. And then from the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. It says, for you have been granted the privilege for Christ's sake, not only to believe and confidently trust in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And I feel that I need to read that again because some of you need to understand that what you're going through is to mature you. What you're going through is to grow you up. Amen. And every time trouble comes, there is a method that God has given us to cry unto him. And so Philippians 1.29 Amplified says, For you have been granted the privilege for Christ's sake, not only to believe and confidently trust in him, but also to suffer for his sake. And then we go to the book of 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12. Hear me tonight. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny and disown and reject him, he will also deny and disown and reject us. And so tonight I need to ask the question why do the saints suffer? Why do we go through trials and tribulations? And then you will understand why we need to move to higher ground in the word of the living God. Remember tonight that God is sovereign yeah, and yeah. yet good. Yeah. And yet life is hard. Mm -hmm. You and I both understand that there are some things we have gone through that have caused us to cry that have caused us to shed tears, yes. that have caused us to be in a sorrowful condition. Mm -hmm. But I need you to understand tonight that you are not the only one. Amen. And there are others that have gone through yes. and have learned their lesson by moving and relying on the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ and moving now into victory. And so tonight, I need you to understand that with bruises and brokenness, Trials and hardships, sorrow and tears, yet in Christ, nothing we walk through is wasted or worthless. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. Yet in Christ, yes. nothing we walk through is wasted or worthless. For the believer, no tear is wasted or shed. Mm. No cry is worthlessly expressed. 
no pain is futurely suffered. God is always working in our affliction, yes. always moving us now into maturity yes. and granting us the peace we need to move forward in the midst of our suffering. And so tonight, I want to ask the question, why do God's children suffer? Let me say that again. Why do God's children suffer? And a great man in the word of God, in the first book of the Bible, the book of Job, he asked that question. Mm -hmm. And I need you to understand that Job chronologically is the oldest book in the Bible. And it is the book that teaches us what suffering really is all about. The test that he went through and how he came out victoriously by depending and remaining in the things of God. And I need you to know that it is important for you to understand that though he was one of the wealthiest men in the East, he lost everything in one day. And I need you to understand today and I hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us because many of you don't understand you really haven't gone through anything. You really haven't suffered a great deal. The things that we have gone through really means nothing compared to what this man went through in one day. And I want you to understand that after all that he lost, his sons, his daughters, his cattle, and his servants, and even his wife turned against him, but stayed with him. Yes. Hear me. Yes. The Bible says in Job chapter 1 and verse 20, and I need you to hear me tonight. It says very clearly to us that this thing that Job went through, this thing that happened to him, this thing that moved him, this thing that uh, moved him out of his place of Suffering was depending on the things of God. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Job chapter 1 and verse 20 said, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. All right now. Hear me tonight. Yes, verse yes. 21 says, And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Mm -hmm. I need you to hear me because this is very important for yes. you to understand. This man said, the Lord gave, yes. uh -huh, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the last verse in that chapter, you need to understand, said, <laughs> in all of this, yes. Job sinned not, nor charge God foolishly. Right, and I need man. you to understand tonight that many of us are charging God foolishly, not understanding that this is his way to mature you, to bring you to a place where you can stand in the midst of whatever the devil is trying to do. Yeah. And so tonight, hear me, why do God's children suffer? As Job asked, shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? Job 2 and 10, ultimately God ordained and brings afflictions unto the believer's life. According to Ruth, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, he is sovereign over all of our suffering. Are you hearing me? Though he uses the means to accomplish his purposes yes. in our lives. Yes. Hear me tonight. Each affliction always flows from a good God working for his good purposes. According to Psalms 119, 67 through 68. Psalms 119, 67 through 68, and Romans 8 and 28. And you know what that says. For all things work together for the good, for them that are the called of God. Ultimately, God causes what grieves him for greater purpose that glorify his name and strengthen his people. That would be you and me. Listen to me today. One of the greatest theologians, Richard Baxter, a 17th century Puritan, wrote a magnificent book entitled The Saints Everlasting Rest, 
or are treaties of the blessed state of the saints. And in their enjoyment of God's glory, at one point he asked, why do the people of God suffer so much in this life? And I don't know about you, but you're not the only one that have asked that question. Yes. It is a question that has been asked down mm -hmm. through the ages of time. Yes. And yet the Bible has always had the answer. Yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. I dare not pretend to know the depth of God's purposes and reasons for afflicting his children. Nevertheless, we can conclude some purposes on this side of final redemption. Here we have an expression that God will deliver us out of them all. Hear me tonight. So, number one, why do God's children suffer? First of all, to prepare us fully to enjoy our rest. Listen to me tonight. Life is a vapor, according to James 4 and 14. It is here today and gone today. The day is coming for every believer when God will call us to depart from this sin-soaked world into the ravishing delights of a paradise with him. Psalms 16 and 11. Listen to me. But until we see him face to face, this everlasting rest is built upon the foundation of earthly sufferings and afflictions, according to Acts 14 and 22. I need you to hear me tonight, laying a head on the pillow after a hard day of work, reaching asylum away from the ravishing of war, finally sitting down after a lengthy day of corralling your kids, there are foretaste of heavenly rest after worldly weariness. Amen. It will be in heaven as it is on earth. Yes. Hear me tonight. Our weariness will one day give away to unthinkable refreshments precisely because this life is filled with such deep sufferings and pain. Hear me tonight. As it is now, our weariness ready us for a deeper enjoyment of eternal rest. Remember that Paul said this is but just a light affliction. When this is over, the greater will come. And so number two, why do the saints suffer? Listen to me very carefully. To keep us from mistaking earth for heaven. I, my God, I need you to know that you are pilgrim and a stranger in this world and that there are sufferings and trials you must go through, but you are on your way to a heavenly place where there is no suffering, where there is no pain, where there is no death, where there is no crying, there is no tears, and there is no sorrow. Lord, have mercy. Hear me tonight. We are like a nomadic tribe. According to 1 Peter 2 and 11, we are all sojourners on our way home. Yes. You do realize that this is not our home. This is just a place of testing. And after the test is over, Jesus said himself in John chapter 14, verse 1, that I'm going away to prepare a place for you, that where I go, I am going to come back and receive you unto myself. Why? In my Father's universe, there are many abiding places. And if it was not so, I would have told you. And so I need you to understand tonight that we are going through this period of suffering so that we will understand that there's a better time. Yes. There's a better season. There's a better day coming after a while. Listen to me very carefully. It would have been a ludicrous for the Israelites to stake his claim on a portion of land in the wandering wastelands when God had promised him a land flowing with milk and honey. Listen to me tonight. We're on our way tonight to understand that these things that we're going through are only preparing us to be strong in the word of the living God. Yes. Again, tonight, we're going to ask you to please mute your phone so that we can do this work and understand what God is doing to Amen. us in the midst yes. of our suffering. Hear me tonight. Uh, it is a mistake in our affections attentions, and energy to understand that this earthly land is not our heavenly dwelling. 
Affliction focuses on a gaze beyond this earthly horizon and helps us to see that this land is not the ultimate end. I want you to know that God has promised a new heaven and God has promised a new earth. Yeah. And in the midst of that promise, he said that you were going to suffer through trials and tribulations, but he would bring you out mm -hmm. of all of them. Yeah. Number three, what is the purpose for the saint of God to suffer? And hear me tonight, to draw us nearer to God. Let me say that again, to draw us nearer to God. Life is a battle, according to Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, Romans 8 and 13. A believer's affliction can be at times reveal the idols of the heart, the things that are holding us back, the things that are keeping us down. And what is God doing? Shaking us and bringing us out of all of these things that we might understand that it is him that we're seeking, that the relationship is not about us but it is about the eternal God huh, and yeah. moving closer in kinship yes. with the things yes. of yes. the living God. Yes. Lord, help us tonight. Help Yet while a shot of adrenaline to the soldier on the front line who begins to doze, but then hears that the snaps of a twig, listen to me tonight, so affliction seizes our heart with such effects that we startle awake to see God and then to fly to him. Baxter contends that it is our dear Lord. He did not put these thorns into our bed. We should sleep out our lives and love his glory. Yeah. Listen to me today. I know many of us are going through things. Even this day, I've gone through the suffering of moving now to see my son in intensive care, sleeping and not awaking, understanding that this is a thing now that I must put in the hands of God. Yes. And yet I came away from that hospital saying, God, you are in control. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I give you glory. glory and so God. this is a time now that it draws us nearer to God. Yes. Listen to me. Number four, while the saints are suffering, is to quicken our pace toward God. <laughs> hey, glory be to God. Some of us are moving a little slow. And I'm telling you tonight, you're going to have to pick up and move a little faster. Why? Because the greater you move and the faster you move, you're in the very presence of the eternal God. Oh, God. Listen to me. Life God. is labor. Yeah. According to Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Let me say that again. Life is labor. In other words, life is work. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. And how true it is that we have a tendency to grow lethargic in our responsibilities, yeah. calling and our heavenly pursuits. That is which we began with haste and zeal eagerly downshifts to a slothful and lethargic crawl. Many times an altogether abandonment. Even the Christians whom God promised to keep as a child and bring safely into heavenly kingdom can slow their pace in the pursuit of God. Mm -hmm. But I need you to know tonight it's time oh, to run oh, this race yes, yes, and yes, run this yes, race yes, with yes, patience. Yes. Looking unto Jesus to the author yes. and finisher of our faith. I want you to understand tonight that this is no time to slow down, Amen. but this is a time to move in a faster pace yes. in your prayer life. Yes. This is a time to move in a faster pace in your life of fasting. Mm -hmm. This is a time to move with a greater pace of reading God's word, yes. understanding that the enemy wants you dead. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says in John 10, 10, part A, the thief cometh not, but to rob, to steal, and to destroy. Yes. But thank God for John 10, 10, part B. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yes. But in the midst of abundant life, there is a point of suffering. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me tonight? Many good God-given gifts in life can become impediments that slow pursuit and zap our energy and zeal. Yes. You went to church on last Sunday, but you skipped this past Sunday. Mm 
Why? Because you were weary and you needed to rest. But you forgot the scripture said in Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling yes, of yourselves yes, together. Yes, yes. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. You see, every time the enemy stops us, it means we're not pursuing and moving forward. And the enemy of our soul wants us to suffer. The enemy of our soul wants us to be depressed. But I told you tonight that the Bible said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but guess what? The Lord delivers them out of them all. Oh, yes, and so tonight, I need you to understand that we are all in need of supernatural guts. That's what I said. <laughs> in the wind of our affections and desires and efforts, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5, we need to understand that affliction thrusts us onward more quickly as we long to be free from its clutches, are you hearing me, and burst forth into the perfectness toward a new life. And notice what Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Listen, that means that the old things have now passed away. And so I need you to understand that number five, why do we suffer is to give us sweeter taste of him. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I need you to understand life is a feast according to Psalms 34 and 8. Life is a feast according to Psalms 34 and 8. Cool water tastes more refreshing after long hours of hard work in the scorching heat of the sun. Delicious food tastes more satisfying after a period of going without and being hungry. When much of life leaves a bitter taste in our mouth, afflictions warms the tongue and readies the taste buds to find true satisfaction in God and God alone. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 5 through 10. Are you hearing me tonight? I need you to hear me with your ears and perceive with your heart that your mind be transformed to the fact that, Lord, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, yes. I will fear no all evil. Right, right. Why? Because you are with me. Yes. Listen to me. Again, we find that the theologian Baxter said he keeps his most precious cordials for the time of our greatest fainting and dangers. Though it cannot be proven, I have seen it among the saints and experienced it myself. The deeper your affliction, the more desperate your cravings, and the more desperate you are to seek the things of God. Listen to me, that's the real time to pray. That's the real time to sing a brand new song. Tonight, saints, I need you to understand you are not the only one that are going through. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. It is recorded in the scriptures from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Men and women of God who have gone through their suffering and came out more than a conqueror. Yeah. Listen to me tonight. Afflictions will come. Let me say that again. Mm. Afflictions will come. No theologian can change that. No, no philosopher can change that. No. no great student can change no. that. Why? Because the Bible said many afflictions will come, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Listen to me. Evil is truly evil. Our world is truly broken. Yeah. You understand that? I just read to you in the book of Matthew 24, wars and rumors of wars, yes. diseases, pestilence, all of these things are coming upon us. Those are trials and those are tribulations. But I want you to understand that verse 13 said, but he that endured to the end, oh, the yes. same shall be saved. And so tonight, trust the giver of your afflictions to woo you closer to himself in the midst of your suffering. Mm -hmm. All God is trying to say to you is, I need you to come closer into the circle of my relationship oh, so that I can give you the desires of oh, your heart. Yes, Listen to me tonight. I want you to understand that one of the greatest men in the word of God found in the New Testament is the Apostle Paul. And I need you to understand that he 
went through tremendous yes, trials yes, yes. and tribulations for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. And yet before he was saved, he was a rascal second to none. Listen to me. I need you to understand that you cannot criticize him until you start looking at yourself. Right. Until you were saved, you were a sinner. Until you were saved, you were lost. Until you were saved, you were out of the circle of the living God. Oh, but yeah. once God saved you, he cleansed you from your past and moved you into a place where you could understand now, whatever I'm going through, the Lord is with me. And because he's oh, with me, yeah. I'm going to make it to the end. Yes. Listen to me tonight. One of Christ's greatest apostles suffered many, many things. And that again was the Apostle Paul. We find in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8. Paul said we are pressed out of measure above strength inasmuch that we despair even our lives. And sometimes it looks like God is not with us. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like our tears are going to overflow and we are going to drown in our tears. But I want you to know that the word of the Lord said, weeping might endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Oh! Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take comfort in the word of the living God. Listen, Paul was saying in this passage, I'm going through something. I don't understand it all. I'm being pressed. Are you hearing me tonight? Beyond my endurance, beyond my ability to handle it. And I don't know why I'm low and I welcome death. But even in the midst of these storms, the Bible said, God said, my grace is sufficient. And it's the strength that I'm looking for now is the word of the living God. Listen to me. Now, Paul was a godly servant, a man who loved the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he suffered great things. And I need you to know tonight that he said to us that this is a test, not a temptation, but a test. And without a test, there's not going to be a testimony. Yeah. And I need you to understand the Lord gave me many years ago this theme. He said, if you're not going through anything, you don't have anything. And I need you to understand that these things that we're going through, others have already gone through. Amen. Others have already suffered. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the great chapter of faith, it deals with men and women who went through horrible mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. And yet the Bible requires that they came out, but they didn't keep the promise because the promise was yet for you and for me. Therefore, we do not know all the reasons behind Paul's suffering, but it could have been a combination of several things. Hear me tonight. He had been mistreated in Ephesus, and in the resultant riot, the people had tried even to kill him mm -hmm. by stoning him, but God raised him up. Yes. He has recovered the church in Corinth soundly, and he didn't know whether he was still accepted there. Certain people accused him of being unstable, like sometime people accusing you and I of being unstable. Why? Because we love the Lord yes. and we want to get closer to him. Right. And they're saying to you, you go to church too much. Mm -hmm. You do this too much. But I want you to understand that the closer you get, the greater the adversary is going to work on you. Hear me tonight. I said the closer you get, the greater the adversary is going to work on you. But through all of these things, he has given you the power to stand still and to move forward in the praise and the glory of his name. Listen to me. They also accused Paul of being a poor speaker not highly commended by his brethren, for they said, your preaching is hard. Your words are not of the wisdom of this world. And thank God that our word tonight is not couched in the wisdom of this world, right. but couched in the wisdom yes. of God. Amen. And that's why it's hard for people to understand mm -hmm. what God is saying yes. to us. And yes. I need you to hear me tonight because you don't understand that all of these things that he's saying to us is found in the word of the living God. Yes. Let me just read one verse for you. Lord have mercy. In the book of Proverbs chapter three, 
and I need you to hear me today. Chapter 3, beginning with verse number 5. This is what it said. Trust in the Lord well, with all thine heart mm -hmm. and lean not to thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Listen to me tonight. He said to us in verse 7, so that you won't miss it. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Yes. Fear the Lord. Hallelujah. Fear the Lord. Yes. And do what? Depart. Depart from evil. Why? It shall be help to thy neighbor and moral to thy bones. Listen to me tonight. It's understandable tonight that we are seeing now great men and great women. They're passing over. They're crossing. Transitions are made. People we said yesterday were great men and women of God are gone today. Right. But guess what? You and I are still here yes. to give God glory and to give God praise. And so tonight I need you to understand that we have to consider what Paul said concerning trouble, concerning trials, concerning tribulations. I know the faith movement said that we shouldn't be suffering. I know the faith movement said that everything is going to be kosher, but I need you to know that's not the word of God. Amen. Listen to me tonight from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. I'm talking about the holy word of God. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. It said we are troubled. Uh-oh. Lord, have mercy. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted, well. but not forsaken, <laughs> cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. After all, you're looking to Jesus, who's the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, I got to repeat that again, lest I start shouting. Paul said we are troubled on every side. Yes. Trouble. 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 Trouble on every side. side. Yet not distress. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. We are perplexed. We don't understand right. all the things yes, that yes, we're yes. going through. But he said to us, we're not in despair. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Mm -hmm. huh? e Cast I down, yeah, but Lord, not I destroyed. Know. Lord, Hallelujah. have mercy. Why? Because always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. When you carry Christ Hallelujah. in your heart. Yes. Regardless of what you're going through, can I share with you that you're going to come out more than a conqueror? Yes. Listen to me tonight. What did Paul suffer, L.A.? The Bible tells us, and I listed for you, of the Jews, five times he said, I received 40 stripes, save one. That meant he was whipped 39 times. Yes. Had they whipped him 40, he would be dead. Mm -hmm. I need you to understand. He said, thrice I was beaten with rods. Mm -hmm. Once I was stoned. Mm -hmm. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day. And I've been in the deep. In journeying often in peril of waters. In perils of robbers. In uh, perils of my own countrymen. Well, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brothering. Mm -hmm. And weariness and painfulness. And watching often in hunger and thirst. And fasting often in cold and in nakedness. Beside those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily, the cares of all the churches. Ah, oh, Paul said, I'm going through. You don't understand. All of these things have happened to me, but I'm not giving up. Yes. Why? Because I'm suffering for the cause of Christ. Oh, yes. Why? Because Christ suffered just for me. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Paul's life was absolutely full yes. of suffering. Yes. But can I share with you? He said in the end, I fought a good fight. Yes. Lord have mercy. <laughs> he said, I kept the faith. Yes. Henceforth, I know mm -hmm. there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me. But he said, not only for me, but for all of those yes. who will keep this same persuasion that whatever I'm going through, I'm passing through it. It is not going to stay. Listen to me. I always say that it came to pass. It did not come to stay. Listen to me. I ask you, what is the root cause of your trouble tonight? 
What is the root cause of your suffering tonight? As with Paul, it may be a combination of things. Listen to me. It is bodily suffering. Paul bore in his body the mark of physical suffering that was given to him by man, and yet he bore it well. I need you to know that folk are going to talk about you. Oh, yeah. Folk are going to lie on you. Folk are going to spread rumors on you. Yeah. And all of this is about suffering. Yeah. All of this is about trials in your life. But you can't stop living because somebody lied. That's right. You can't stop living because there's a rumor on your life. You can't stop living because people don't like you. Amen. Why? Because the love of God will draw you mm -hmm. into a place where mm -hmm. none of these things will affect your life. Amen. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. Have you been rejected? Have you lost friends because of your faith in Christ? You know, once you get religious, folks say you're too religious and they leave you alone. Uh -huh. I need you to know that's why you need to get with people with the same mind. Yeah. You need to get with people who have the same desire yeah. to love the Lord and move forward in the things of God. Listen to me tonight. I need you to hear me and hear me well. One of the primary purposes behind all suffering of saints is to qualify us to become consolers of others who are suffering. How can you help others if you haven't gone through? Hello? How can you tell others how God's going to bring them out if he haven't brought you out? Lord, yeah, have mercy. Right. I know some people think that they should just go through and every day is going to be happy, happy, sunny, sunny. But I need you to know that the rain will oh, come, yeah. that the storm will yeah, come. Yeah. But in the midst of the storm, he told us to get on solid ground. Yeah. And when you get on solid ground, when the flood come, when the rain and the winds come, he said, after they have gone, you will still be standing. Yeah. Why? Because you have placed yourself on the solid rock. Listen to me tonight. Here Paul said, the Lord comforted us in all of our tribulations. What? Paul, you mean we have tribulations? He said, the Lord comforted us in all of our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them yeah. which are in many troubles yeah. by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. 2 Corinthians 1, 4. Yes, it's in the Bible. And let me repeat it again. The Lord comfort us in all of our tribulation. Are you hearing me? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Yeah. Knowing that the Spirit of God brought us out, we can testify that if he brought me out, he will bring you out oh, yeah. because he's not a God of partiality. Amen. Lord, have mercy. One of the neediest ministries in the church of Jesus today is that of constellation. People who will encourage one another. Lord, have mercy. Not trying to find out what happened. That's not right. trying to find out who did it. Amen. Not trying to find out why. But looking at the person saying you should be in courage yeah. by the word of the living God. The same thing happened to me. I was sick. I was down. I was out. But the spirit of God moved me and kept yeah. me and brought me out. And now I can give you the information. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not to your yeah. own understanding. And guess what? You too will come out mm -hmm. more than a conqueror. Yeah. Listen to me tonight. We do not need more Christian psychologists who use biblical words to disguise their psychological approaches. They need to get down to the real deal. That is the word of the living God. Listen to me. God's word has an answer for you. Yeah. And we find it both in the old and in the new. Oh, yeah. Hear me tonight. One of the greatest examples of suffering would be the three Hebrew boys ah. who were in a place now in Babylon. Yeah. They were in authority. But because they were in authority, they were tested. Mm -hmm. And the king said to them, you got to bow to the idol that I created. Well, guess what? Even though they were officers in Babylon, they decided that the word of God was more important important yes. than their position. Amen. And they said to the king, king, we love you. We understand what you're saying, but we're not going to bow. And whatever the consequences are, we are willing to go through. Yes. They said this, our God can deliver us, but even if he don't, Lord have mercy, we still not going to bow. Amen. You know the story. You read it well in Daniel chapter three, that the king said, heat the furnace seven times hotter than before. 
Are you hearing me? And even the men who were going to throw them in <laughs> died yes. from the heat. But when the three Hebrew boys who trusted in the Lord yes. in the midst of their tribulations, My guess God. what? They walked around in the fire yes. because Jesus came into the furnace and brought them out. I need you to know he'll come in your fire Hallelujah. and he'll bring you out. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Oh, your God. head and hairs will not be singed. You won't smell like smoke. Jesus. Why? Because you trusted in the Lord. Yes. You went in with the faith to know that he can and he will bring deliverance. Yes. Lord, have mercy. I need you to know tonight that I need you to understand that these little things that the devil is trying to do is a distraction. But you need to tell the devil, devil, the Lord rebuke you yes. and the blood of Jesus is against you. Yes. I know what you're trying to do, but I'm going to keep my eyes yes. on the post oh, of glory. Yes. Lord. Keep my heart mended in the things of God. Keep my mind transformed by the word of God. Yes. And I'm not going to let nothing turn me around. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Yes. I want someone who has been tested in the fires of affliction. And you're out there in Facebook land. You're out there on the conference land. You know what you've gone through. You know what people have said. And yet you are still standing. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise. One who has known loneliness. Hello. One who has known sadness. One who has known sorrow. One who has known rejection. One who's known heartaches. I want someone who's been to the point of giving up and yet has trusted God to come forth rejoicing, believing stronger than ever. That person is a true expert. They say, listen, honey, I already know what it means to hold on. I already know what it means not to give up. I already know what it means that the enemy is going to try my faith. But I need you to understand that faith is trusting in oh, God. God. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. You see, it is oh, suffering people. Name. Hear me tonight. Yes. It is suffering people who receive the consolation mm -hmm. and comfort of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. They know the sympathy of Jesus yes. because his voice speaks comfort to them yes. in their hour of darkness. Oh, Jesus is saying, continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. I know you're weeping, but this weeping is not going to last. Yes. I know tears are coming, but the tears will be dried up. Yes. All I need you to do is continue to march forward yes. to the glory of God. Hallelujah. These sufferers become rich in spiritual resources. They develop a confidence born out of having endured tribulations and testings. Best of all, God gives them the influence. They could not have gotten it any other way. Yes. I don't know about you, but I've been sick. And I've been down. But guess what? I was healed and delivered. Yes. Lord have mercy. Hey, glory be to God. Are y'all hearing me tonight? We know tonight that people who endure suffering, hear me tonight. People who endure suffering, who have come through it and proven God's faithfulness, become strong, mm -hmm. mellow, patient, and they have the gentleness of Christ. And I love to be around such people because they're encouraging to your spirit. People who know, listen, honey, this too shall pass. It's not going to last. All you need to do is hold to the hand of God. Yeah. They'll tell you, baby, I thought I was dead, but I found out that in the the midst of dying, God gave me life. Lord, have mercy. In the midst of my sickness, God healed me. In the midst of my troubles, God delivered me. And so when you have that kind of encouragement, you know now that if God did it for them, He'll do it for you. Oh, yes. Lord, oh, have yes. mercy. Hallelujah. So, beloved, that is what God has for you oh, through your God. suffering. You. He has a joy and a testimony yes. that you'll be able to stand and say, the devil thought he had me, but I got away. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Have mercy tonight. Yes. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. You come through your trials and you'll be a great help to others. Yes. Yes. Why? Because now you can encourage them oh, yes. because somebody has encouraged you. Mm -hmm. Remember what Paul said, you who understand those that are suffering, pick them up. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Give them the joy to know that this is not going to last. Hello, somebody. Because if you don't, 
Listen to me very carefully. If you don't, you eventually will backslide and get out of the faith. Yeah. And that's why a lot of folk are out of church saying, well, I don't know. And I understand mm -hmm. it happened to me and now nobody encouraged. But listen, honey, David said when nobody else would encourage me, I encouraged myself. Yeah. Amen. Listen to me tonight. Yes. I don't know about you, but I, I'm ready to move oh, forward yes, in Lord. the midst of all yes, that have gone yes, through. Yes. Son is in the hospital. Bank account ruined and don't know why. But I understand that God is saying, though you're going through, mm -hmm. you're coming out on the other right side. Now, and when right. you come out, yes. it's going to be a testimony oh, that it was yes. God that delivered yes. me. Yes. Hear me tonight. Another purpose for suffering of saints is that we should never again trust in ourselves, but only in God. One of my favorite songs is on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Why? Because all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. And you need to understand that another purpose, hear me tonight, I need you to hear me with all of your heart. Another purpose for suffering of saints is that we should never again trust in ourselves. You don't have enough money. You don't have Amen. enough strength. Amen. You don't have enough intellect. Yes. You don't have enough power to make it without the help of the Lord. Right. Oh, David said, when I consider that all that I have done, if the Lord had dealt with me according to my sins, I'd be dead. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. He delivered me and brought me out. And so tonight, I need you to know Paul wrote for us in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Let me say that again. Paul said that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. He said, in essence, the Lord brought me to the end of all human help, to the brink of death, and it was a place of so hopeless, only God of resurrection power could have rescued me. And that same God is going to rescue you. Amen. Listen to me tonight. What a wonderful place to be. Did you hear me? What a wonderful place to be at the end of your rope. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's what I said. What a wonderful place to be at the end of your rope. Right, I've already said, when you hit rock bottom right. you bump into God yeah. let me say that again <laughs> hey, glory be to God when you hit rock mm -hmm. bottom you bump into God yet if you listen to most Christians in the midst of their suffering you would hear I made it somehow I'm hanging in there I just live one day at a time I'm trying not to let go or to let it go down I survived I always been a survivor all of these things are not accurate in the word of God. You didn't make it on your own. You made it by the help and the strength of God. No, I would become worse than you could ever imagine. God sometimes drives you to the very end of your rope oh, yeah. into deep suffering. Yeah. So you lose all confidence in your ability to save yourself. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Oh, I know everybody is talking about how you can improve yourself. But can I share with you the only way you can improve yourself is to improve the word of God in your life. Amen. Amen. Help me Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, Lord. Help me Holy yes, Ghost. Oh, my God. Listen to me tonight. But it is all focused on our flesh. Our ability to extricate ourselves from our suffering. But can I share with you, it can't be done. Mm -mm. Why? Not in the flesh. It has to be done in the realm of the spirit. Listen to me tonight, beloved. How many times have you tried to work out all your troubles mm -hmm. and failed? Amen. How often have you been flooded with temptations that overwhelmed you yes. and you did not overcome? It all brought you down and you said, oh God, you know I love you with all my heart, but I am being sorely tempted. I hate this. I despise it. Lord, I don't understand it, but I need you to say, Lord, I need your help. That's it. That's it. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Yes. Please don't misunderstand me, saints of God. 
I believe God wants us to fight the good fight of faith because the Bible said so. Yes. But the Lord has a way of allowing us to be pressed out of measure, yes. to suffer so powerfully that all other helps are in vain. Nothing you try works. Nothing you read seems to help. No counsel of others make any sense. Suddenly, you are forced into a crisis that obliterates all your trust in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yet, you have hope, except to give up all human hope. You are forced to trust God. And you will see the only way out is when you allow him to have the right of way. Yes. Listen to me. Paul said to us loud and clear, I had the sentence of death in me. I was tested beyond measure to the end of all hope. And it was all so I would no longer trust in myself. How will you hear me tonight? I had to turn to God with faith that he alone could save me out of all of my sufferings. And so let me share with you tonight, whatever you're going through, God already knows. Yes. Whatever you're going through, God has already ordained it for a season. That's right. And after that season, he has brought rest and refreshment to your soul and joy into your heart and a refreshing mindset to bring you a song that you've never sang before. And you're going to sing it like you crazy. Amen. Oh, Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. I turned to the Lord in the midst of all this and said, Lord, all I want to do is to serve you yeah. with all my heart. And he answered me, a physical affliction on top of it all. And he said to Paul, this affliction, I'm giving you my strength. You will endure it. And so tonight at the end, you come to the place where you're giving up, trying to deliver yourself. Stop it. Amen. Stop Amen. it. Yes. Because you cannot deliver right. yourself. Amen. Only God through Christ Jesus can deliver you. And so guess what, people of God? It's time to get back to God. Yes. That's what I said. It's time to get back to God. Are you hearing me tonight? Mm. You give up condemning yourself. Give up trying to understand. Give up trying to do the things in your own power. Yes. Instead, you turn to the Lord and cry out, Oh, Father, mm. I'm in over my head. Yes. All my striving have gotten me nowhere. But this I know. You have all the power I need. You raise the dead and you can deliver me. I yes. trust you oh, yes. from here on out. Oh, That's yes. a prayer yes. that yes. we need to pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, it's not about me now. It's about you in me. Yes. Giving me the anointing to yes, destroy yes, every yes, yoke. Yes, Listen yes, to me. The scripture said this in 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Hear me tonight. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory oh, be to God. Let me read that again. Oh, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Yes, this is Lord. what is said in the book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 4, 12 through 13. He said, Beloved, that means the saints of God, yes. not sinners, but beloved. Yes. He said, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But this is what he said. He said, rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. In other words, in the final, final, when the day of death have come and resurrection have come and you're with him. You're going to realize that all of these things were worth it yes. because now you're in the safest place Hallelujah. that the safest place can be. And that is in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Listen to me tonight and hear me. Jesus was tempted by the devil. You know that yes. in the book of Matthew, in the book of Luke, it's all there recorded. Are you hearing me? And it was the cause of great suffering to him. 
Like our master, we will all be faced in various temptations, some of them fiery and fierce. But beloved, I've learned a precious lesson through all of my trials. I found the way of escape. And that's the word of the living God. Yes. Listen, the Bible said this, and I need you to hear me tonight. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. What did it say, Anderson? He said, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Faith. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Who will not suffer yes. you to be tempted oh. above that you are oh, able, but with the temptation also yes. make a way to escape yes. hey, that ye may be able to bear it. Yes. Let me say it again. Why do we suffer? Mm. Because we're learning how to go through with the power oh, and God. the anointing of yes. God. And the word of the Lord is saying, you are not any special person all people are suffering through various things. But the Bible said this, there is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. Whatever you are going through, somebody else have already gone through. Somebody else have already put their hands on the head and say, I don't know what to do. But they release their hands when yes, they realize yes, yes. that this too shall pass. Yes. Why? Because the God that we serve will give us a way to escape. Listen to me. What is this way to escape tonight? It is coming to the end of your own strength and turning absolutely to God. It is saying as Paul did, I do not trust in myself anymore. I'm going to trust in the arm of the Lord. The way of escape is simple tonight. It's childlike. It's childlike faith in God. It is resigning yourself and saying, God, I put everything in you. I put everything on you. I'm not going to try to figure it out. It is trusting you totally to see me through. And at the end of my suffering, I know that you're going to give me victory. Listen to me tonight. Finally, God intends that when he delivers us from suffering, we never again doubt his power to deliver us in every present and future trial. Listen to me. This is not the only time you're going to be sick. This is not the only time you're going to be broke. This is on, not the only time you're going to be friendless. There are going to be other times. But because you've already passed these tests, you're able now to say this too shall pass. And so tonight, who delivered us from so great a death does deliver us in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 1.10. Listen to me tonight. Paul, the great apostle, is speaking of God's delivering power. Yeah. Past, present, and future. Yeah. Ah! Hallelujah. He is saying God has delivered us in the past. He's delivering us now. Yeah. And he will deliver us in every future trouble and oh, trial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have to fear anything that comes our way. Why? Because we know God is going to deliver us. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yet like the children of Israel, we forget the past deliverances of the Lord and all oh, the deliverance God gave them. They soon forgot. Mm -hmm. But I need you to remember that, honey, I'm not going to forget that what he did in the past, he has done in the present, he can also do in the future. Yes. That is the God who controls heaven and earth. The God who has all power in his hand. The God who controls the devil and every demon. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know that he has given the devil a word. He cannot do anything to you except the Lord permits. Yes. And when the Lord permits it, he knows you're going to be able Come on. to prove that test. Yes, yes. Listen to me. Glory. Listen Hallelujah. to me. Tonight, I need you to hear me. Thank you, this is not the time to go crazy. Amen. This is not the time to lose your mind. Yes. This is not the time to give up on God. Amen. God wants you to build your faith on his past deliverances. Yes. What he's done for you in the past, Hallelujah. he's going to do for you in the present, and he will do for you in the future. Yes. Listen to me tonight. Hear me. If you never heard me before, he wants you to come to such a place in your faith that you trust him in every crisis. Yes, yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. That you trust him in every temptation. 
and know you can face the future without fear. He wants you to be able to say, my God, my God. delivered me in the past. Yes. And he will deliver me right now out of my present trouble. Yes. And he will keep delivering me yes. until he comes back for me. Amen. No matter what I have to endure, mm -hmm. he's more than able yes. to do what must be done. My Lord, my Lord, then again, my Lord, I'm thinking Lord. tonight about King Jehoshaphat, who came through great times of testing, fully trusting in God. The combined armies of Moab and Ammon had come against him to do battle, but this is what Jehoshaphat said. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord ha! and proclaim a fast throughout all Judea to ask the help of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but these armies represented the power of Satan coming against the saints of God. So where did Jehoshaphat go for help? He believed in his God and that God brought him total victory. Yes. And so tonight, the Bible said Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord, to ask help of the Lord. Can I ask you tonight, whoever you are, whatever you're going through, seek help in the Lord, not in your finances, not in your family, not in anything that you can trust, but the trust of the living God. Hear me tonight. Hold on. Help is on the way. He went on to speak to the Lord in prayer. And that's what the deliverance came through the spirit of prayer. And can I ask you tonight, do you know how to pray? Mm. And do you know where your prayer is going? When you believe what the word of the Lord said, pray and believe. Mm. Don't doubt. Receive the word of God yes. that he's going to bring deliverance yes. in your life. And he's going to set you free after the test is over. Listen, this is what he said. Lord, aren't you still God? Who is able to stand against you? Is there any demon, any temptation able to withstand you? You have all might and all power we need. We have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Verse number 12 of this book, chapter 20. The enemy was coming in like a flood. Are you hearing me? A great company is coming against us. But we don't know what to do, but we know this. We know who to trust yes. in. And because he trusted in the Lord, the Lord brought deliverance in his life. Hear me tonight as we come to a conclusion about why saints suffering. He said to us right now, there is an army of demonic seductions and temptations coming against us. And we don't know what to do, but our power is in you. Our faith is in you. Our hope is in you. And I need you to know because of that, you are no match for the devil and you can't know what to do, but you can trust in God yes, because yes. he controls even the devil. Oh, yes. Listen to me, dear saints, do what Jehoshaphat did. Get your eyes on the Lord. Turn to him and say, Lord, my eyes are up on you. The battle is not yours. You must resign from the fight. And you got to call on the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, we sang that song, call on Jesus and he will answer prayer. Call him in the morning. Call him in the evening. Call him at midnight. And what will he do? He will answer prayer. So finally tonight, I need you to know, I want you to write this down, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And I need you to know that every tragedy, every sickness, every accident brings the same question in mind, why does God allow it? And the question is, God is testing us to bring us out into a place where we will now know the power of God in our lives. You need to understand tonight that nobody, nobody on earth, past, present, and future, will go through anything greater than God can deliver them out of. Hear me tonight. God wants to teach us his sufficiency to trust in him and him alone. Are you hearing me tonight? Listen to me. I'm closing out now, but I need you to know that you need to stop complaining 
Stop arguing with God. Stop fussing about stuff that you don't understand and get back to the word of the Lord and say there is no temptation that is greater than the power of God to bring deliverance in my life. God allows his saints to suffer to cause us to identify with Christ and his suffering. And that's what Peter said to us. Arm ourselves yeah. likewise as Christ has suffered in the flesh, so we shall too. And so tonight I need you to know as I close and get ready to pray, I'm praying for many of you tonight that have cursed yourself and said, I don't know if it's a God, I don't know why I'm going through. Listen to me tonight, you're going through to be tested, to be strengthened, to be encouraged that the power of God is in your life. God allows his saints to suffer in order to demonstrate us an example for others. When they look at you and say, baby, if you made it, I know I can make it. Through your sickness, through your downturn, through your financial disaster, if you came out, then I know I'm going to come out because God is going to deliver me. God allows his saints to suffer in order to deepen their faith and trust in him. And the songwriter said, I will trust in the Lord. Ah! Hey, hallelujah. hallelujah. God, I give you glory. Yes. So in conclusion tonight, when we encounter suffering, are you hearing me? When we encounter suffering, when we encounter difficulties, when we encounter trouble, we need to realize that this is not something strange. Mm -hmm. The Bible already told us that this is not something strange, as though yes. some strange thing has happened. Suffering provides an opportunity to evaluate our walk with God. And we ought to ask the question, is this discipline or is this development and training? Mm. Sometimes it's hard to know. Even if it's part of the consequences of past failures, hear me, God intends us to use it for our good if we respond properly. Mm -hmm. Hear me tonight. Even past failures can become the basis for a powerful life message in the hands of a redeeming God. Whatever the problem, God seeks to draw us closer to himself. He wants us to draw upon his infinite resources, yeah. trust his loving care, yeah. and draw our comfort from his word. He is equipping us through hardship to know him better and to help others come to the fellowship of a living God. He is developing us into Christ's likeness. Yes. He's allowing us the privilege of displaying the gospel for his glory. And so tonight, as I close, listen to me. Are you the only one that's suffering? Let me give you some great men tonight that went through suffering and came out conquering. First of all, I told you about Job. Listen to me. The Bible gives us that no Biblical character has suffered more than Job. But I told you, the Bible said he worshiped God and did not charge God foolishly. Then David is a Bible character who is no stranger to hard times. He had to flee Saul for 20 years because Saul tried to kill him. But yet he kept his confidence in God. And one day, because he trusted in the Lord, he became the second king of Israel and the apple of God's eye. Yes. And then we have Moses, who's another biblical character who suffered several instances of hard times. But I need to read to you tonight from the book of Hebrews, this thing about Moses, because God put it in my spirit and I almost rejoiced. I said, Lord, have mercy. Let it be so. Listen to me. This is what it says about Moses. This is what it says about Moses in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 28. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of oh, how sore punishment are you hearing me? Supposing ye shall be through worthy, he has trodden underfoot the Son of God, who has counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and has done despised the spirit of grace. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is, are you hearing me tonight, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. 
but called to remembrance the former things. Are you hearing me? In which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly while ye were made a gazing stop, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyful and spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring system. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense and reward. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. This is important now. Chapter 11, and let's look at verse 23. Chapter 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Verse 24 of chapter 11. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing, are you ready for this, rather to suffer affliction mm. with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Verse 26 of chapter 11, you need to hear me. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. Are you hearing me? By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And so tonight, from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse 34 through 39, and Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 23 through verse 29, you understand now that this man of God endured afflictions. Why? Because he understood that the greater thing was to understand the things of God. And so tonight, this is the Apostle L.A. Anderson telling you that even the Apostles, even the Prophets, even the Evangelists, even the Pastors and Teachers, they all go through. Oh, Nobody yes. is exempt. Amen. Are you hearing me tonight? Because you have a title does not mean that you're not going to go through a trial or a tribulation. Amen. But I need you to know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, as we pray the prayer of faith tonight yes. for the saints yes. who are oppressed, oh God. who are discouraged, in the name of who Jesus. need a touch from oh the Lord. hand of God, Lord, that Lord. Tonight, yes, tonight on Lord. Tuesday night, you will refresh them yes. in the word oh, of the yes, living Lord, God. Yes, you will touch them to understand the that they too shall yes. come out more than a conqueror. Yes, when they trust yes. in you yes, with Lord. all of their heart. Oh, no God. doubt, no yes. doubt, yes, but Lord. to remember that yes. you are in control. Yes. Have your way tonight. Have your way, Lord. Give us tonight a refreshing oh, spirit yes, to understand that yes. the joy of the Lord oh, is our strength. Yes. And so tonight we press our way yes. through the yes. trial. We yes. press yes. our way yes. through the tribulation. We press yes. our way yes. through the yes. things that the enemy yes. is trying to do. Knowing that you said, I've come oh, that you might God. have life. Yes. And that you might have it more yes. abundantly. Yes. And so tonight we receive yes. the abundant life yes. in the spirit of the living oh, God. God. The yes. blessings yes. of God that make it rich yes. and add it no oh, sorrow. Yeah. Have your way tonight. First of all, we repent tonight yes, because we thought we were doing it on our own, mm -hmm. only to find out that it was you that yes, was carrying yes, us Lord, and yes. bringing us to a place called mm -hmm. safe haven. Yes. So tonight we repent yes. and say, God, forgive us. Yes, and Lord. now let us move forward into yes. the things of God, holding to the word of God and to the power of his might, knowing that you've given us the good armor of God yes. to quench the fiery darts yes. of the wicked. Yes, and so tonight we stand oh, on God. the solid rock. Yes, and that rock is the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Help us tonight yes, to overcome yes. all of these worries. Help us tonight yes, to overcome yes, our anxiety. Yes, to yes. understand tonight that none of these yes, things God. can move us because we're in your hand and your hand is the hand of protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place Hallelujah. of the Most High yes. shall abide under the shadow yes. of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he's my fortress. Yes. Oh my God. Hallelujah. God, 
I give you praise. And because you are my fortress tonight, I'm standing on solid ground. Touch us now. Touch us now. Touch us now. Touch us and encourage us to move forward in the midst of our trials and our tribulations, knowing that if Job made it, if David made it, if Moses made it, if Peter made it, if Paul made it, then we too can make it because you're the same God for them. You're the same God for us today. And we thank you for it in the precious name of Jesus. Now you that are on the conference line and you that are on Facebook line, I want you to lift your hands and just give him glory. Lift your hands and give him praise. Lift your hands and thank him. Huh? Glory to God for the praise of God moving you in the time of afflictions and bringing you out more than a cup. Open your mouth tonight and give him praise. Open your night. Ah, my God, your mouth tonight and give him glory because this is the God that brought you through suffering. This is the God that brought you out of trial. This is the God that brought you out of tribulation and he brought you out more than a conqueror. Praise him tonight. Ooh, glory to God. Praise him tonight. Bless his holy name. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. The devil is a liar. Open your mouth tonight. The devil cannot quench this. You know now that through your suffering, God was with you. Through your suffering, he's brought you out. Hallelujah. So open your mouth. Oh, oh my God. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and give him praise on Facebook Live. Open your mouth on the conference line and give him praise. This is the God that brought out Paul. This is the God that brought out Peter. And this is the God that's going to bring you out with the testimony. Oh, hallelujah. Our God. Great is our God. Our God. Awesome is our God. Our God, who is omnipotent, who is omnipresent, will lay his hands on you. And all you have to do is trust in him with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Guess what? He will bring you out. God bless you tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight to hold on in the midst of whatever you're going through, knowing that the same God that brought them out is the same God in Christ Jesus that's going to bring you out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed it in him should not perish. Notice that, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so tonight I give you the presence of the living God to bring you out and to stand you up. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Holy. Thank you. Holy. Capital H O L Y. Holy. Capital W H O L L Y. Holy into the things yes. of the living Thank God. You, God bless you now. God, bless. God keep you. Yes. God make his face to shine yes. upon you, you and bring you peace. You're now back into the hands of our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you.